and hello, hello, hello. I'm Chris Angel. Uh, I'm making this video because it seems that a lot of the members of the DHLC are having a little bit of trouble when it comes to joining some of our Swiss tournament events. Uh, we have these wonderful events and we seem to be getting a lot of withdrawals and or forfeits uh, because of people not negotiating for times or people not coming to their games and or other such reasons and I think that some of these are just coming from uh, a little bit of ignorance of not knowing how the uh, system works so let's see if we can clear some of that up and hopefully we'll have less withdrawals less forfeits because really the purpose of these is to number one have fun and number two to learn so you know it really is a lot more fun when we have the more people uh, playing in these types of tournaments. They're, they're, they're a lot of fun. So let's say that we want to join one of the tournaments. Let's go to the DHLC. There is a member there. Uh, this guy right here, his name is Sir Ivanhoe. <clears throat> Sir Ivanhoe is very, very good about communicating when these events are taking place. He will usually communicate this in a number of ways. He will post a note he will post a news item uh, which will also come in the form of a message to you and he will often also post in the forum so uh, there's often something going on here so let's take a look in the forums and we'll see it's usually a pinned topic as well so right here as we can see DHLC slow Swiss 6 so let's click on that this tournament will be blah 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 and he will describe it so you can read about it and if you decide that it's something that you would like to do then you just pop down here and you leave a comment please sign me up thank you uh, I'm not going to post this comment because I don't need for Sir Ivanhoe being confused by saying well Chris Angel what are you doing signing up for Swiss Private or Swiss Sips you've already signed up so we won't do that but that's what you do is you post your comment and once you do that you wait you will get a uh, reply uh, inviting you to join a group it will come in the form of a message so it'll come in one of your messages and it will be an invitation to join a special group and um, right here is the slow Swiss 6 uh, for the purposes of this though let's go into slow Swiss 5 because slow Swiss 6 has not started yet and there is a procedure so let's go through the whole thing and I'll be able to do that with with this so you come into the slow Swiss or whatever group that it is that you've joined and you pop over to the forums and you will see a topic that says player check-in and you're going to pop on that <clears throat> signed up to play got your invitation and join the group then check in by posting a comment to this topic stating that you have read the rules and are ready to play uh, he'll leave dates as far as you have to check in by such a date to be eligible to play <clears throat> but let's take a look at the rules so hyperlink there here's the rules do make sure that you read through them you're probably thinking oh my gosh that's so long oh, blah, blah, blah. so let's just go over the basics our tournaments are designed for those who enjoy playing slow Swiss, uh, sw uh, slow games and believe in Dan Heisman's advice that slow chess is an important part of improving your game the time control for each is 45 45 that is a main control of 45 minutes per player with an increment of 45 seconds for each move all right so let's do that now we'll also have to do negotiations with our opponent you will be assigned an opponent I'll get to that in a moment and you're going to have to negotiate a time to play because you are going to be using the live chess server. It is preferred that you use the 24-hour clock. However, if you're like me and you get a little confused, well, I'm not confused with it, but I can't add. I can't tell you how many times I've accidentally written the wrong time when I tried to use the 24-hour clock. But if you do use, if you do choose not to use the 24-hour clock, be, be, be sure to use AM or PM in your negotiated times. Also, they must be negotiated and scheduled um, per Eastern time. Right now, we are in Eastern Daylight Time. Today is May 19th, um, but uh, in late October, we'll switch to Eastern Standard Time. But at any event, it is Eastern Time. There is a time, time zone converter. As you can see, there's a link to it right over here. You can use that to help figure out uh, what time it will be in Eastern Time 
for whatever time it happens to be for your own particular time zone. <clears throat> but we do negotiate in Eastern time. And uh, again, make sure you write AM or PM or use the 24 hour clock. Um, I will demonstrate the negotiations in just a moment. We talk about the negotiations. You want to please show up at ne your negotiated time to play your game. Where do we do that? We, view, we use the live server. So under play, you click live. Uh, also, a good idea to friend your opponent. That way it's easier to find them in live. Uh, traditionally, I believe the white the player assigned with the white play, uh, white pieces is going to send out the challenge, but it really doesn't matter who. You just make sure that you have the proper time control, 45-45. You'll have to click on custom to do that, uh, but that's how you do it. You just do it in live chess. <clears throat> Once you are finished with your game, you're going to post the result, and I will show how to do that as well. So once you have read the rules, and you're in the player check-in, let's pop down, and you leave a comment. I have read the rules, and I am ready to play. And you post it. That's it. All right, so then you wait. Now, <clears throat> Sir Ivanhoe usually puts the pairings up on Sunday evenings. Sometimes they're tentative. He will write if they are tentative. Again, that will be in the form of a message. You will get this. And um, here's an example here, round five pairings. Rounds start on Mondays and end on Sunday nights. This round begins on, and he will leave the date. First offers are due by 23.59 Eastern Time, Tuesday night. Games may be scheduled to start no later than 2100 hours, Sunday night, Eastern Time. Please note that the player listed first has the white pieces. Click on your game listed below to go to your game form. And so here I am at the bottom. So you click on it. You will, be, you will see your opponent. And you click on it. Alternatively, you can just go into the forums and find it there as well because they will be listed in the forums. It's a little harder to do it because you've got to search for it, uh, being that we have so many players. Uh, so it's easier to just do it from the, uh, from the uh, pairings. And so here's a good example. This was my round five. I was uh, uh, set to play with Strickland 420. You'll see he has a perfect example of offering times. Uh, he says hello, and then he has that he'll be available to start play Thursday between 11 a.m. and 1300 Eastern Daylight Time, Saturday at 11 a.m. Eastern Daylight Time, Saturday at 1400 Eastern Daylight Time. Hopefully one of these times work for you. If not, just let me know. I'm sure we can work something out. Thanks. So that's a perfect example of how to <coughs> leave a time. Um, none of those did work for me. So if, if so, if they don't work for you, you list three times of your own. We do ask that you respond within 24 hours. You think, well, how do I know somebody's done that? First thing I do is when I pop up and go to my, my pairing, I go over here and I tick the little box that says tracking comments. Very, very good idea. Track the comments so that you know when a comment comes in on this and you will know that somebody is negotiating with you. So if the, none of the times that your opponent offers, or you can be the first to offer, uh, offer three of your own. And I offered three of my own. Uh, he accepted one of my times. I confirmed the time with him. He confirmed again, uh, and then we had the game. He was nice enough to even do that. So we have the game. Now, after the game ends, as you can see, I lost, but that should be of absolutely no surprise to anyone. Uh, after you play your game, you are responsible, one player at least, for reporting it in the form. Uh, that's that same form we just came from. And you probably might be wondering, how do I do that? Oh, it's very, very easy. And so what you're going to do is you're going to click Get PGM. That's over here on the right. Uh, if you look on the left side of my screen, uh, you'll see a blue arrow coming down. So there it is. Now it's been up, uh, downloaded. And what you're going to do is you're going to open this file. You open it with Notepad. Just open it with Notepad because that's all it is. It is, it is a text file. Mine knows that I want Notepad. And so you go in here. You control A. That's going to select everything. And then you just copy and you're going to go back to the forum to report your result. And so, as you recall, very easy to find. Just go right back in your forum.
Now, a PGN is very merely a text file. And so when it downloads for you, if you have trouble opening it, just tell it to open with Notepad. Notepad will get it to open for you. And uh, just Control, Control A, and you will select it all so that you, so, excuse me, so that you can copy and paste your game. So what you're going to do, click the little chessboard, click Game or Sequence of Moves, Continue, use a PGN file, Paste. Continue. Uh, I often show coordinates. If I am playing with black pieces, I will flip the board. In this case, I believe I was white. Was I white? I don't remember. Uh, but I will do that. You can design the, the board however you want. I always design it as pink because that is me. You insert it, and then you post your comment. And your game will be there. Now it's the second time I've posted it. So, uh, but that, that's all there is to it. It really is. That's all there is to it. And then, you know, you just wait. Uh, your next pairing will go up on Sunday evenings. Also, he has a topic with the standings. So you can look and you can find yourself uh, wherever you happen to be. And uh, these games really are a lot of fun. So... Let's get some more people in these and let's have uh, less forfeits and less withdrawals because let's have some fun. We really do have a lot of fun in these tournaments it's, and it's really a lot more fun for the players when you don't have an opponent who's uh, withdrawn or uh, forfeited their game. Um, we do know things happen. If something happens to you, uh, you say you have a negotiated time and oh my gosh, all of a sudden uh, your stomach hurts and you're, 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 you're throwing up and, and you're just not going to make it. Uh, as soon as you can, uh, when the event passes or whenever, or you know even before, I, go to go to your forum. Let them know you're not feeling well. Let the the tournament director know this. Communicate uh, open lines of communication. Uh, if you've shown yourself to be a worthy opponent who uh, is generally a reliable person, and something like that happens, and you have to forfeit, more than likely you're not going to be withdrawn. Uh, but uh, you know, if if you don't show up or something like that, uh, you can be forfeited and withdrawn. Uh, also worth noting, uh, when you get to the live and you are waiting at your negotiated time, uh, we generally give a 30-minute grace period for your opponent to show up. Uh, if they do not show up within that time period, again, simply go back to the forum and report that they didn't show up and you can see what can happen from there. Hopefully your opponent will have some sort of communication as to why he wasn't there. Okay, so that's it. It really is as easy as that, and hopefully we'll have more players playing. Thanks. Bye.